العوذ بالله من شر الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل الله تعالى فرجهم الشريف ولعن عدوهم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today I wish to discuss with you a very important matter a matter which upon the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is half of our religion Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said abulation, wudu is half of our religion now knowing this hadith by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam we must ask ourselves are we performing the proper wudu is it incorrectly and if it is incorrectly uh, we must go and try to find the proper method of wudu and protocol with the Quran in order for our our acts to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now we know that if your wudu is not accepted or your wudu is not performed correctly your prayer is invalid now with your wudu not being performed correctly your prayer is invalid and if your prayer is invalid your fast is invalid as well as your prayer if your prayer is invalid your pilgrimage is, is invalid so it is important for us as Muslims to understand how to perform the proper wudu and protocol with the Quran of course now before I mention the verse of wudu in the Quran I want to mention some ahadith regarding wudu and different aspects of wudu different benefits from different aspects about wudu Imam Ali bin Musa al-Rada alayhi salatu salam has said the reason why the order for wudu has been issued and the reason why the act of worship should commence by it is that when the servant stands before Allah and converse with him they should be clean and away from uncleanness and pollution wudu eliminates wudu eliminates drowsiness from men so that the heart can acquire purity for standing in the presence of Allah upon the tongue of Imam Ali bin Musa Rada alayhi salatu salam wudu eliminates drowsiness from men so we have the ability to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said one who performs wudu while in the state of wudu while in the state of purity not in impurity Allah will give him 10 good merits another hadith similar to this by Imam Jafar al-Saliq alayhi salatu salam is one who performs wudu while in the state of wudu while in the state of purity Allah renews his repentance without having to ask for forgiveness you renew your wudu Allah will renew your repentance subhanallah what a merciful Lord we have but you must perform your wudu correctly now we're going to look at two different aspects wudu is has a medical and an ethical benefit to us from an ethical from a medical benefit I'll, I'll speak first from a medical benefit washing your face and hands five times a day at least three times a day if you're going to join your prayer is that is it's just uh, a w- very great way of cleaning yourself as well as wiping part of your head and part of your feet you, the water is reaching your hair cleaning your hair as well as cleaning your feet the exterior of your feet now we spoke a little bit about the medical benefit of wudu and the purity of wudu and a way of sanitation in one way or another we'll speak about the ethical benefit of wudu the ethical benefit of wudu we're wiping our head and our toe we are when we do this we're pledging to Allah that we will serve him and obey him from our head to our toe we wipe our feet we are making a ahad, we are making a promise with Allah, we are on wudu, we will not let our feet lead us to the wrong direction. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now that we discussed a little bit about wudu, let's talk about the Quranic verse of wudu and what it really translates to and what people translate it to in accordance to their deviant thought. أعوذ بالله من شر الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا قمتم من الصلاة فاقصلوا وجوهكم وأيديكم إلى المرافق 
وامسحوا برؤوسكم وارجلكم الى الكعبين الى الكعبين الى الكعبين واحد رسالة الكعبين three four times the stress الى الكعبين what does this mean people believe that we should perform uh, in performing wudu we should wash our feet but us madhabat ahl al bayt we believe we should wipe our feet because of these specific words الى الكعبين if we were to wash our feet and not wipe a part of our feet why would Allah put in the Quran إلى الكعبين up to your ankles why would he specify washing why would, <laughs> why would he specify the, the wiping of your feet up to your ankles that doesn't make sense besides some people sometimes try to say it says أمسحو but it really means wash now I ask you earlier in the verse it says it says wash so why would Allah tell us wipe but it really means wash why would he use two words for wash why would God try to confuse us this does not make sense uh, anyway now I'm sorry I still didn't translate the verse into English in the name of God most gracious most merciful O you who believe when you stand up for ritual prayer wash your face and your hands up to the elbows and wipe part of your head and part of your feet part of your feet now like I was saying we are the school of Ahl al-Bayt Imam Ali alayhi salam Fatim al-Zahra alayhi salam Imam Hassan Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam they are the ones that lived with the Prophet they are the ones that grew up with the Prophet Imam Ali alayhi salam is the one that prayed behind the Prophet seven years before anybody else we follow Imam Ali alayhi salam that's why we call ourselves Shi'at Ali Shi'at Ali tell me this Shi'at Ali the one who was with the Prophet seven years before anybody else prayed is gonna perform wudu incorrectly we perform wudu like Ali performed wudu and Imam Ali alayhi salam performed wudu the way the Prophet Muhammad performed wudu we perform wudu the way Fatim al-Zahra alayhi salam performed wudu and Fatim al-Zahra was raised by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so tell me how are we performing wudu incorrectly this does not make sense at all ajib wallahi ajib استغفر الله ربي ورسوله لك اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد now I want to give two hadith from the Sunni school of thought خمسة العمال volume five page one hundred three المصدر من هنبل volume one page one hundred eight عبد الله ابن عباس says Allah سبحانه وتعالى has enjoined upon us two washings washing of the face washing of the hands two wipings wiping of the head and the wiping of the feet. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Hopefully my point got across. Wa akhidu anna. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.